right. <coughs> a few questions that were asked. All right, I think 1.3 November 2018. All right, 1.3 November 2018. So here we are, November 2018, and question 1.3. Okay, let's so deal with this question quickly. All right. So we're going to run through how to deal with these questions and a few others that were asked a while ago. So we have that. Now, if you're given you're given this expression here, if um, 3 to the power 9x and 5 to the power root of p equals 64, without the use of a calculator, we need to find the value of this expression. All right, let's start working um, quickly here. We let's let's bring that question right somewhere. Yeah, okay, so we have that question, and then we screen grab that, and then we go. Here we go, all right, so that it's easy for us to work with. So we have this question here, and we need to work out the solution. We'll take it step by step. All right, we're given this. First is to re-express that. So we have 3 to the power 9x equals to 64. All right, let's try to re-express that, you know, so that it's easy for us, because we're going to get stuck somewhere along the way. Or rather, if we were to start from here, 3 to the power x, if we were to start from here, let's check something here. All right, over root 5, square root of p. All right, the natural thing to do here is to express this by removing that 3 exponent there. So we have this. And then we have 5 to the power 1 over 2 root of p. Okay. All right. For space sake, I'm going to squeeze a whole lot of things here. And then, uh, what does this mean? 3, 3x three times 3 to the power of negative 3. There are lots of exponents there. These I can write again as 5 square root of p multiplied by half. Okay, this needs to go back up there. Uh, let me clean that quickly. All right. So we have that line. And this is... I'm just rearranging this expression here. Just a rearrangement. Bringing that forward. You see why I'm trying to do that? I'm trying to do that because in the expression I have... Look at this expression here. 5 square root of p, it's actually here, 5 square root of p equals 64. That means I can replace this now with 64, and it becomes 64 to the power half. And using your laws of exponents there, that is simply asking us to find the square root of 64, and that will give us what? 8. Okay, let's get back to the numerator. We have this expression here, but we know that this expression has something to do with this whole thing here. But how do we then break that down? So I'm going to copy that and, and work with it. All right. So I'm going to have, I'll, I'll have 3 to the power 9x equals to what? 64. Let's check something here. All right. It looks like this, looks like this, this numbers don't have a correlation. But I can break my 9x down. So I still have my 3. I have 3x multiplied by 3. And that should be equal to 4. You can use your shift fact for that on your calculator. All right, 4 to the power of 3. Now, this, if I introduce brackets, it's actually the same thing. We can rewrite this. We're only rewriting that as 4 to the power of 3. What do you notice? Do you notice that my exponents are now equal? Automatically, it means the bases are now also equal. So 3 to the power 3x is then equal to 4. I think this is where the challenge is. The challenge is breaking this whole thing down. All right. So if we have 3 to the power 3x is equal to 4. By the way, look at my 3 to the power 3x. 3 to the power 3x there. 3 to the power 3x there. That Therefore, I can rewrite this whole expression from here. So instead of writing... 3 to the power 3x, I'm removing it completely and putting a 4 there because we got 4 here. Multiplied by 3 to the power negative 3. By the way, we said this whole expression here, remember this is 64 given, to the power half, 64 to the power half is basically looking for the square root of what? 64. And that will give us 
8 there. So we have this. And without the use of a calculator, we can divide that there. We can divide that. We have 3 to the power negative 3 over 2. We can still simplify this further without a calculator. All right? That gives us 1 over 3 to the power 3. Just notice I have removed the negative. But this is still the denominator. So I have it there. And that gives me 1 over 27 multiplied by 2. And that gives me 1 over 54. So uh, the whole part here is actually simple. I think that the challenge is, is this. is trying to find a way around this section here. All right. So the, the idea is to see what you can or possibly have if you have a 64. All right. A 64 can also be written as 2. Um, all right. You can write the base of 2. Or you can write it as a base of what? 4. If it's 4, then it's 4 to the power 3. And then I think it's 2 to the power 8 or 6 then. Alright. No, not 8. Okay. Alright, the next question is to work around this one here. Okay, let's... Uh, the next question is to work around this section here. So let's, let's take this question out. There we go. All right, so we have this. I'm just going to put this up in the middle here so that it's easy to work around. Um, okay, we have it there. Let's put it right in the middle. Okay, the first part says we should solve if that is greater than zero. Okay, what? x squared plus 8x. Let me just make that look nicer. Eight x plus sixteen is greater than zero. Here we're going to need to get our factors, right? So what we have? X plus four. All right. Our critical value is simply negative 4 here. Negative 4. And how do we now deal with this inequality? Okay, I'm just going to do this inequality because we need it across the paper. Let's have a value here. Negative 3. Just put that on your calculator. Alright? So you have a negative 3 here. 4 minus 3 will give you positive 1. 4 minus 3 will give you positive 1. Your answer is positive. It means any value you use on that side would give you a positive value. Let's pick a number here. A negative 5. Alright, 4 minus 5 will give me a negative 1. 4 minus 5 will also give me a negative 1. Any value again will be what? Positive. Alright. Now, let's go back to our inequality. Our inequality says that we want things that are greater than 0, which means positive. So we go back to our critical value. For me to get positive, do you see that if I go this way, um, I would always have a positive. Okay, let's just discard that. Alright. If I go this way, I would always have a positive value because I need that. From here again, if I go this way, I would have a positive. Look at what we do. Drop the signs. Drop the signs the way they are. Okay, this is... Uh, drop those signs the way they are. Let's let me erase this so that it's clear. The way the signs, I remember we had positive here, and then we had our arrow here. All right, look at this arrow here. Look at this arrowhead. It's facing this way, less than. Look at this arrowhead here, facing this way, greater than. So you have your x, critical value, negative 4. x, all right. x, critical value. So that's your answer. Please don't try to combine, especially when these things are moving in different directions. Don't combine. You can only combine if they are pointing to the middle. But if they are pointing out this way, this one is going this way, the values are this way, this one, the values are this way. Don't combine them. That's your answer. All right. Okay. If you understand how to write your maths very well, then you can say 
x is an element but this is not compulsory all right you can just leave it as simple as that x cannot be equal to negative 4. it's the same thing but we can just stick to this and then we're fine now for which values of f of x i want to deal with this question using the graph using the graph method and if i'm going to use the graph method look at what i'm going to do i'm just going to, going to plot this sketch this graph very fast here my values are negative 4 remember so my graph is going to turn right there what is my y value okay we're looking at this how do you get your y intercept your x must be 0. So 0 here, 0 there. My y value is what? 16. And this is going to be a smiley face graph because this value here is positive. Alright, so we're going to have this graph that looks that way. Now, if f of x equals to p, let's get something here quickly. What type of solutions do we want? <coughs> we have two unequal negative roots. You know what that simply means is move this point. Make sure it intersects at two negative values. All right, look at this. If I shift this graph down, my x axis, leave the graph alone if I shift that, there is no point of intersection between this green line and the graph. Here we have what? Unreal because there's no solution. No solution there all right now if i move this graph up uh, my x axis sorry up a little bit what do i have i have two points of intersection and those values are negative remember and i want what two negative roots and they're not equal check again if i move it i have two negative values which are not equal if i move it again i have two negative values which are not equal if i continually move if I continually move, I'm moving my x. But if I move to this point, what do you notice? I have a negative value here, and I have a zero value here. A zero value is not negative. That means I cannot move beyond that point. Wait, what happens if I, if I were to move above that point? I have a negative and what? A positive. That is not what I'm looking for. I am looking for two negative what? And unequal. All right. So, what are my posti possible lines that work for me here? Any line below 16. Any line below what? 16. These are the values. Or the line must be greater than 0. So, my lines actually, the one that works for me, are between these two values. Between. So, if they are between... Alright, if they are between those values, let's, let me just erase that, uh, rewrite that nicely. If they are between those values, okay, so it's between 0 and what? 16, between. And this, since these are my y values, alright, these are the y values that give me these x points. So I have a y there. All right, I'm going to have a y there. By the way, f of x equals to p. What is f of x? Y. That means our y is our p. Therefore, my answer will be 0 less than what? p less than 16. Okay. 0 less than p less than 16. 0 less than p less than 16. And that's your answer there using a the graph. 0 less than p less than 16 very straightforward all right um let's try the next one quickly that i am going to see if i can use the graph and the algebra so the whole of this um okay 1.2 here you have x squared 1.2 there we have x squared so we have the whole of this but right, let's see that quickly and see how we're going to get that done 
All right, quickly. Here we're gonna move a bit fast. Solve if f of x equals to zero. Okay, guys. Um, x squared minus five x plus two equals to zero. There are no factors here, so what do we do? We run to our calculator where a is one, your b is negative five, and your c is what? Two. X equals to negative b plus or minus square root of what? Um, b squared. Okay, let's just make sure that writes properly. I need to recalibrate. B squared minus 4ac over 2a. So what do we do? Please, there's a map for this substitution here. Negative. All right, what do we have? We have a negative um, minus 5. plus or minus what do we have there negative 5 squared minus 4 our a is 1 our c is 2 everything divided by remember this is x equals to 2 multiplied by 1 all right so here, guys, we just go to our calculator and get an answer. When you go to your calculator, you have x equals to 4,56. x equals to 4,56. All right, and 0, 0,44. I'm sure those are the answers you also got. All right, so that's very straightforward. You get your marks there x equals to 4 comma 5 6 and then x equals to 0 comma 4 4 all right uh, my butt just need to be reset but I'll do that after doing this question okay x equals to 0 comma 4 6 uh, sorry 0 comma 4 4 4 comma 5 6 and 0, 0,44. 4. All right. I'm sure that's what you got as well. All right. Let's try to see the next question and sort it out very fast. Um, for which values will this function have no real root? f of x equals to c. All right. f of x equals to c. f of x. Remember my f of x is x squared minus 5x. All right, let's take this one out. I'll be causing a whole lot of um, malfunctioning. All right, so what do we have? We have x squared minus 5x plus 2 equals to c. Okay, this looks like a child playing with the board. Just need to recalibrate, restart this board, but do that. Let's just manage through. All right. We have x squared. Let me try the side of the board. Minus 5x plus 2 equals to what? C. Let's quickly check something here. Have, if it has no real roots, we are simply saying our discriminant must be less than what? Zero. So what we do here is make this a standard form. So x squared minus 5x plus 2 minus c equals to what? Zero. Standard form. You get a mark for that. All right. Now, your a is 1. Your b is negative 5. All right. And your c is Two minus c, all right, a negative five here. Yeah. Our discriminant must be less than zero. So let's solve this. What's our discriminant? B squared minus four 
AC. B squared minus 4AC. So all we need to do then now is to what? Substitute. B squared minus 4AC must be less than what? 0. And so what do we have? Negative 5. Negative 5. So substitute quickly. Negative 5. All what? Squared minus 4. What's our A? Our A is 1. And our C is what? 2 minus C. 2 minus C. Let's try to do something here. 2 minus C. Okay, that seems to be too thick. All right. Now, if we were to solve this, this would give us what? 25 minus 4. All right, into bracket. 2 minus C, and that is less than what? 0. Okay, my board is really malfunctioning, but we can sort that out. 25 minus 8. All right. And this will give me plus... 4c less than what? 0. What is 25 minus 8? That's 17 plus 4c less than less than 0. Alright. Now if I have that, let me come to the left side of the board. Okay. I hope you're following. Just don't mind the board right now. We have 4c therefore would be less than what? Negative 17. C therefore should be less than negative 17 over 4. And that's your answer. Alright, so remember the condition for us not to have um, real roots. We can also solve this graphically and quickly just going to run through that. If we were to solve this graphically, we already have our x values, remember? So your graph is going to actually look like this because we have two points. Your graph would look like this. And this is 2, the y-intercept, 0, 0,44 and 4,56. All right. Your midpoint, if you use x equals to minus b over 2a, you actually have 2,5. All right, turning point. How do you get your y value? Substitute this into the original function. If you do that, this turning point here will be negative 17 over 4. My body is misbehaving. That's why I'm trying to quickly just finish this. All right. It will be negative what? 17 over 4. Remember how we get this value? We substitute the turning point value in the original equation. So for this thing not to have real roots, this line must not touch the graph. And it will not touch the graph below your turning point, below. So you're talking about from here going down. So your C or your Y value is less than what? Negative 17 over 4. Which is basically what we got earlier on, but our Y value is now C. So C must be less than negative what? 17 over 4. And that's your answer there. So either you use the graph or you use uh, the other algebraic method. And finally, this one. Calculate the value. Let me just quickly do this. Um, calculate the value. Okay, let's get this done. Calculate the value of the maximum value. All right, let's work through that quickly. Calculate the maximum value. All right, calculate the maximum value of that. Now, if we were to calculate the maximum value of S, it means this denominator must be minimum. Okay. This denominator must be minimum. The denominator must be minimum. All right. Okay, hold on. I wanted to check the language that I'm using. The denominator must be minimum. Denominator must be minimum. Which means x squared 
x squared okay my body is really misbehaving x squared plus 2 must be minimum x squared plus 2 must be minimum must be minimum what does the word minimum mean to you derivative so let's derive this so if we have x squared um, let's derive quickly because of the board if you derive x squared what do you have 2x right if you have x squared and you derive that what are you going to get you're going to get what 2x minimum means the first derivative must be equal to 0 so at this point x will only be equal to what 0 right x would only be equal to 0 so if x equals to 0 let's substitute it there so our s therefore will be what 6 over 0 plus 2 so the maximum value here of s is equal to 3 that's the maximum so to get the maximum the denominator must be what minimum and since you're talking about minimum you're talking about our first derivative being equal to what zero all right so um, those are the questions